Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here. Welcome back once again, finally, to another character guide video. Today we are looking at the Sorcerer. Probably one of the more underappreciated classes. It's not super overpowered to the point where everybody has one, but it's not incredibly situational to the point where nobody has one. It's a fun class, but not too multi-purpose. Upon max, the Sorcerer will have 670 health, 385 mana, 60 attack, 60 speed, 75 vitality, 25 Death, 60 Dexterity, and 60 Wisdom. So a lot of 60s, and if we're looking at it statistically, the Sorcerer is actually a pretty balanced class. They're definitely more in the Sorcerer's favor. We have an above average 60 Attack and Dexterity, giving us a little bit of an extra edge in terms of DPS, similar to that of the Necromancer. We also have above average Speed, making this one of the faster Robe classes, just to give it that little extra edge to make it unique. 25 Death is standard, and 60 Wisdom is pretty smack dab in the middle. The one maxed stat that I find to be kind of unexpected though is the 75 vitality. Like where did that come from? Granted I don't know that much about sorcerers, but it does seemingly come out of nowhere. The only other classes that have 75 vit are the knight and warrior, two melee classes which is pretty much the polar opposite of a wand class. But hey I'll take it, I'm not complaining. As I said the weapon of choice for the sorcerer is the wand, but which wand is the best? We've got three main options. Conducting wand, crystal wand, and the wand of recompense, but everybody just calls it recomp. There are also three secondary wands that you can use, but I find them to be a bit too impractical. Scepter of Geb is nothing remarkable, its DPS is rather low, and even though it does give you plus two attack, you would be much better off just picking a stronger wand. The only reason you would use this is if you didn't have a better wand, or if you wanted the whole Geb set. St. Abraham's wand is probably my favorite of the three, because while its damage is lower than Recomp, Conducting, and Bulwark, it's not too far behind, and it gives you four vitality and four wisdom, in addition to having ten range, the longest range of any wand. This means you can cheese your way through a few bosses in the game by damaging them off screen like Dr. Terrible. And then of course you have the Wand of the Bulwark. I'm not gonna lie, this is a pretty unorthodox weapon. It can deal between 300 and 400 damage and can pass through obstacles, but it only has a 33% rate of fire and you have very little control over where these shots end up. Your bullets move in a figure eight pattern, meaning again you have little to no influence on where they end up. The only time I find myself using Bulwark is to mess around, really. I mean, I suppose in Godlands or with hordes of enemies you could do it, maybe in a haunted cemetery, I don't know. But the bottom line, it's it's not very practical, and you're much better off using one of the main three. So each of these three wands has its own purpose. The Crystal Wand has the ability to pierce through armor, Recomp has the ability to pierce through enemies, and Conducting Wand can have higher DPS, while also offering some enticing stat bonuses. So I brought these three wands on over to PFIFL to take a look at the DPS calculator, and see how well they fared against one another. Conducting is black, Recomp is yellow, and Sea Wand is sky blue. Up until around 60 defense, Conducting Wand is the superior pick, but afterwards, Recomp Comp actually beats it out. So a lot of the bigger enemies that you may find in Draconis, Shatters, Shaitan, Stone Guardians, Sarcophagi, Recomp is going to beat out Conducting. Sea Wand, however, appears to have the disadvantage in the beginning, but starting at around 45-50 defense, it becomes the clear winner. Since it has the ability to armor pierce, it can do max damage all the time, whereas Recomp and Conducting are going to have a huge chunk of their damage taken out by the enemy's defense. This is where Sea Wand shines, but for all of the lower level minions and enemies in Godlands, Recomp and especially Conducting are the better options. The problem is both Conducting and Sea Wand are UT items. Sea Wand only droppable in the white bag by the crystal, and even if you do get a white bag, you might just get the Sea Sword, and the Conducting Wand is only found in the Mad Lab. So if you have to settle for a tiered wand, there's nothing wrong with that. What I do like about the wands though is that they are different from other tiered weapons. Take the sword for example. The difference between tier 11 and tier 12 is so minimalistic it almost doesn't even matter. It's a difference of like 5-10 damage. With the wands, however, going from tier 11 to tier 12 not only increases your damage, but you also gain an additional ability. Recomp is the only tiered wand that has the ability to pierce through multiple targets. On the DPS graph here, I compared the DPS of the Sorcerer to the Necromancer, Priest, Rogue, and Mystic. And the only one that was able to beat out was the Priest, because it has lower attack and dex, and it also uses a wand. So unfortunately, if you're looking for a class with strong DPS, Sorcerer isn't the best option. It's not terrible, but there are plenty of better ones. That's not to say the Sorcerer isn't a fun class, because due to its ability, I actually think the Sorcerer can be a lot of fun. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a Scepter, granting the player the ability to perform Chain Lightning. Upon activation, the Scepter will consume your mana and strike however many enemies it can that are surrounding you, dealing each of them an equal amount of damage. For example, Tier 6, Scepter of Storms. It deals 200 damage to 8 targets. If there are 8 enemies in front of you, you can strike them all for 200 apiece. And the great part is, it only costs 85 mana. 
mana. Not the lowest amount of mana, I understand, but certainly not the highest. You get two Vit and two Wiz as per every tier 6 ability. All around, it's just a fun ability. If you want to try and get Soulbound loot on all the gods in Godlands, start firing off your scepter. Because of the amount of mana that a sorcerer has combined with the average wisdom, in addition to this ability not costing too much in the first place, you can spam your scepter quite a few times to either clear the minions out of the way in, say, a dungeon, or try to get as much damage as you can on all enemies that you see. The sorcerer is kind of like the point in between the priest and the wizard. It has really long range and uses a wand like the priest, but it has a little bit better DPS and an ability that can strike enemies. The scepter is kind of like a focused wizard spell. You don't have to aim it like the spell bomb and you can hit many targets at once, but on the flip side it doesn't deal nearly as much damage. However, there is a UT scepter that you might just be able to get your hands on, known as the scepter of fulmination, which like the conducting wand is part of the Mad Lab Sorcerer set. And just look at that feed power. You know this is good. Scepter of Fulmination deals a little bit less damage, only 180 and only to 7 targets, although it does have the same range. However, instead of granting the player 2 Vit and 2 Wiz, we get 2 Attack and 2 Wiz. And in my opinion, I think that is way more valuable for the Sorcerer, because we already have 75 Vitality. I'm not worried about regenerating my health at this point. I am worried about my DPS. So an Attack stat increase is much more valuable to me than Vitality. And we're still getting the Wisdom buff, which lets us use our ability just a little bit faster. However, the reason that this is, in my mind, the better Scepter is because not only does it cost 65 mana to use 20 less than the previous one, but it also inflicts a slow debuff on all damaged enemies. Think about it. Slowing down minions or bosses in places like the Tomb of the Ancients or the Shatters, heck, even just in the Wine Cellar, is incredibly useful. And once again, the fact that it only costs 65 mana, that's just the cherry on top, folks. While sure it's 20 less damage and one less target, the 20 mana that you're saving here will allow you to perform an entire additional scepter later on that the scepter of storms wouldn't allow you to do. Bottom line, it's a great item. Hard to get, yes but a great item. Alright, robes and rings is a bit more subjective, it depends on what kind of a build you're going for. I personally like to go for the attack oriented sorcerer, so while I don't prefer the Mad Lab robe or the experimental ring, I am using it in the video just because I like the set, I'm a bigger fan of the robe of the Grand Sorcerer and maybe a ring of the Nile. Because the only difference between G-Sork and the robe of the Mad Scientist, G-Sork gives you 6 wisdom and the lab robe gives you 2 vitality and 5 wisdom. So while it's true that we're getting more abilities in Mad Lab robe, are those the abilities that you want. Personally, I prefer having more wisdom so that I can activate my ability a bit more faster. I'm not really concerned about my health regeneration because it's so high to begin with. But if you're going for a vitality built sorcerer, then putting on the Mad Lab robe and experimental ring and maybe even the scepter of storms might be the way to go for you. But like every UT item, this is only if you can get your hands on them. Like I said, my ring of preference here would probably be Nile just because you get that balance of HP and MP plus dexterity and speed. The sorcerer already had above average speed so that just gives us a bit more of an edge here. Not a big deal, but it's nice. And the dexterity does increase our DPS a little bit. Now I used the DPS calculator to find out if Pyramid Ring or Nile Ring was better for the Sorcerer, and truth be told, there is almost no difference at all. Nile for the enemies that have zero defense is better but only barely. After that, they're neck and neck for all I can tell. It's only until around the 55-60 defense mark whenever Pyramid starts to noticeably beat it out. But we have to remember this is only if you're hitting every shot. Even if you have all of this additional attack, if you're not making contact with the enemy, you're not getting your DPS in. So an increase in dexterity might be more preferable for you, because now you're firing out more shots and you can be less accurate if simply hitting your enemy is your only concern. If I could, I would put a bracer on my sorcerer. I really would. It's probably my favorite ring in the whole game. Crown and gemstone are great in their own right, but the bracer just calls to me but I still have yet to get one. Overall though guys, the Sorcerer is indeed a fun class with a very interesting ability. It has a lot of range and you can use that to your advantage. You can stand back, remain safe, and just fire from a distance trying to get your damage in. Unfortunately, in most of the scenarios where you are in a group setting and you have a whole bunch of melees and wizards and dagger classes competing for loot, you're probably gonna get beat out by most of them. If you're looking for a damage heavy class, Sorcerer is not the way to go, but if you are looking for a fresh change, if you're looking for an interesting, different, and really just casual character to play as, I recommend that you try out the Sorcerer. Also, did anybody else think that he looked like the character from Final Fantasy? But that is all that I have to say about the Sorcerer today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See ya.